good story. Let me start, you know, recording the session first. Okay. Um, so here is, you know, a short story that I want to tell you before we start the session so that you know uh, why you're here and why I feel that I am the right person to tell you about um, the topic that we're covering today. Now picture this with me, all right? Um, year 2016, a heavily pregnant teacher who just came out of a classroom, been teaching for like uh, four hours, so a four hour classroom and heavily pregnant reading a book that says uh, teaching online, how to teach online. So it was like a dream to me uh, because the thing is, uh, I, I, was, I was feeling a sort of a fairy tale to have to, to be able to stay at home and at the same time do the thing that you like the most, which is teaching. So um, uh, I got the book and I started to read and voila, four years later, in Nile Tiesel 2020, I uh, presented about how to teach online for other teachers because back then I had like, I've been teaching for like two years in uh, online. You're saying much noise, the whole classroom is empty, is also muted, so everybody's muted. How about that now? So, um, imagine this, January 2020, I was presenting in the Nile Tiesel trying to preach and educate other fellow teachers and convince them that teaching online is manageable and it is something that, uh, you know, the physical teaching or the physical classroom has got nothing on uh, online teaching. So, the, and, and the session or the attendees back then in the day, uh, they were like, you know, I'm not really sure. They were quite skeptical about that, you know, and other teachers had their concerns. So, um, all right. Okay. Funny enough, uh, three weeks or three, actually three months later, everybody was forced into online teaching. And I don't feel that everybody is quite comfortable and most teachers or the majority of the teachers that I have talked to um, feel that they haven't got the hang of it yet and that they wish to have better training and to give better, uh, you know, experience for their attendees as well. So, um, without further ado, let me uh, let me start the session. Now, normally, I would ask you to uh, to to, re to read with me uh, what we are talking about today, what is in our agenda, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to ask you to um, put on two different hats, the teacher's hat and a student hat. I don't know about you if you, uh, if you like Hogwarts or not, but let's see this one here, this one you see in front of you here. This is the student hat, this one, and this one is the teacher hat. So during the session today, you would be putting different hats, one which is the teachers, another which is the student. All right. Oh, here's Mr. Rida. Hello, Mr. Rida. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Can I ask you, uh, you have uh, control now over the session. I need you to make me the uh, main host because you are now the main host and I'm the co-host. So can you make, can you alter this? Can you make yourself uh, the co-host and I'm the main host? You know how to do that? Maybe. 
Okay, so go next to my name in the participants. Yeah. You will see an option named more. You see that option? No. Next I, to the I, participant's I, I, name. Participant's name, yes. Participant's name. Yes. Exactly. I want you to hover over my name, go over my name with the mouse. Your name is... Uh, yes, my name, Ailes and Moore. Again? Ailes and Moore. Ailes and Moore. Look in the chat box, I'm going to write it for you. Ailes. No. And Moore. That's my name, okay? Now, I want you to make me the main host now. Can you do that? I saw it once, but now I can't see it. Over my me? name, next to my name, there is an option called more. You see it? Maybe. Is that? Let me show it to you, right? All right, have a look here with me. Did I see that option more, the word more here? Yeah. Okay, click on it. You will find make host. Make host. Yes, with can you do that? No, there is no option said uh, make host. Okay. In front hmm. of me. All right, I'll tell you what. Why don't you just make yourself mute and I will control the session, okay? Yes. All right, thank you. Make yourself mute, please. All right, thank you so much. Well, technicalities and technicalities of the problems happen all the time, so. All right. The minute the session goes 100, I'm just going to um, close the session, lock it, so that no other people will join us and so that you will not hear the bell uh, sound anymore. All right, okay. Let's start something here. Okay. As I said, I'm not going to tell you what is the, uh, the component of the session today or what do we have in our agenda, and you will decide that at the end of the session, okay? But first, I want you to try uh, do this poll here in front of you. Do you see the option of the poll? There is a question that I have posted here. The question says, activities in physical classroom cannot be used online. Yes or no? Very good. I see people now uh, voting. Very good. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So the majority feels that. Um, hmm. Now I have 62% of the attendees feeling that no, activities in physical classrooms cannot be used online. Others feel like 38% of the attendees feel that, yeah, they can be. All right. Great, okay. All right, right now, ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed the first tool that you can use in your own classrooms. A very, you know, simple tool through the Zoom program that you can use in your classroom. And what's more, there is absolutely zero 
uh, preparation time. You just type in the question and the options and then launch pool, everybody gets that. Now I have a question for you, Hill. I want you to, let me share the results with you. Have a look at the results. What did I do now? I created a pool and I actually, all right. There you go. And I started sharing that poll with you. I want you to put on your uh, teacher's hat and think with me, what ways, in what ways can you use polls in your classroom? Take a minute, consider this. What ways can you use polls in the classroom? You can write your answer on the chat box if you want to. Okay, uh, take care that you are answering me in private. All right, wow, look at the ideas here. Okay, very good. So investigate opinion, games and competition. Uh, the question is posted in the, uh, in the PowerPoint. The deciding on exams or deadlines, excellent, Sameh. Survey Islam to find out about the preference, uh, preferences of activities. Okay, preferred activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gathering information. Wow, look at that range. I hope that uh, by the end of the session, uh, I will be able to pull all these uh, nice suggestions. All right. For me, I, th I, I, I just, you know, thought of pop quiz, opinions, feedback, but of course you came on with way more uh, and better suggestions. There is one thing though I need you to remember. You cannot see who chose what at the poll, but listen to that. You can get a detailed report afterward. You can go to your uh, own account and in the settings, you will find the word pool and you will be able to see who choose what. So if you're making a, a quiz, pop quiz, you would want to know who got the, uh, the listen more than the other. So you would know that later on, but not in front of the students. And I consider that a plus. Why is that? Why is it a plus that nobody can see who did what or who chose what by the teacher but later on? Why is that a plus? Let me check your chat. Hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you. That's it. So it says exactly, exactly, Sharif. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. All right. Yes, Sameh, exactly. So it's anonymous. Nobody sees who did what, but you as a teacher, you have that secret weapon. You know about that and you don't have to tell them, you know, so that they feel, you know, they feel secure to tell their opinion, no matter what. All right. So that was our first simple tool that can be an enormous change into making the session way more interactive. Okay. Now we're going to play another game. I want you to put on the hat of the student again. All right. What you see in front of you here is called uh, a notation. 
Do you see this option with you? I will allow you to annotate in a minute, but I urge you to exercise control over your desire to draw on my board, all right? Uh, I'm going to enable you to annotate on my board here again, okay? And I want you to choose this, you know, I want you to put a heart next to the suggestion that you like, all right? Do you see that option here? This is how you annotate. Go into annotation and then choose stamp. And from the stamp, you will choose a heart. Let me allow you to annotate, okay? Please, do not make me regret that, okay? I know I'm going to regret it, but for the sake of trying, learning and you know, learning and error and stuff. Let's do that, all right? All right, I want you to tell me, what web conference program do you use? Put a sticker next to it. Don't tell me in the chat box, in the sticker in the, from the annotation. Wow, look at the first heart, excellent. I don't have even to check my instructions. Great. Okay. Three hearts for Zoom. Come on, try your hand, okay? It's a free reign now. You can, you can draw on my screen now. Put the sticker. Do you want me to show how? One more time. Look, go from annotation and then go use that sticker, the heart. Oh. <laughs> Look at, the, I love that. I love that about you, drawing the heart by your own hand. Now, that is so much fun, honestly. I, uh, at least I feel, I feel so. Look, even, all right, all right, I got the picture. Okay. <laughs> Don't you just love teaching? It's so much fun. Look at that screen now. All right. Oh, well, the fun and the party is over, all right? <laughs> You're not going to be able to annotate anymore. I'm going to clear. Now, look, a simple tool I can like that, like that, clear everything and control who can annotate and who cannot. Go into the security option. If you click it, you will find plenty of options where you can control your classroom, your virtual classroom, like you control your physical classroom exactly. Why is that good? Why is that good? Can you write to me on that chat box? Let me show you again how to annotate. Look at that. Look at that, a shame, man. Fantastic, okay. Now we've been having so much fun. I honestly can't remember having that much fun before. All right, so annotation. How can we use annotation for pedagogical purposes? How? I see raised hands. Let me, let me unmute. Hello, Wilhelm. Is that you, Wilhelm, my, my, my trainer? Hello? Hello? All right. I've unmuted you, Ilham. Okay. Let me check your chat box here. And then he says, you can allow the learners to take part in this session, which in turn gives them self-autonomy and enjoyment. Absolutely. Active interaction, that's Sharif. Yes. Motivate learners to join. Muhammad Abdel Sattar, yes, absolutely. Get students engaged. Hanan, yes. All right. 
But what could be the risks? What could be the risk? Thank you, Aya, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, Iman, miss. You know, they're wreaking havoc over your board. And sometimes if the session is, uh, you know, if, if the attendees, if you don't know them, like for example, today, I took a great, a great risk uh, trying to ask you to draw on my screen or share on my screen. That means, that means that you don't know who did what. However, let me, you know, let me assure you with this. This is again, there is again an option in the annotation where you can see who annotated. You can see their names. Yes. But then if you can see their names, if you can see who draw on your screen, if you told them not to, because you were using annotation yourself, then you will be able to see and their names will show. All right, have a look. Personally, when I use annotation, I use it to elicit error correction, to get participants to vote, you know, to put a sticker next to the thing that they like, to describe and to draw themselves. They can draw on the screen. I open a whiteboard and I ask them to draw whatever they want to, uh, for example, next to the question, maybe. You know, we always have in our course books this activity that tells you tick the new vocabulary that you know and maybe uh, put a cross next to the one that you don't know. Again, you can share your screen and ask them to tick the ones that they know. Personally, I'm going to try that very soon. I'm teaching face to face. Uh, and uh, in there, there is like, they always love this activity, you know, eliciting, knowing uh, how much they know beforehand by asking them to put a tick next to the one that they know or a cross next to the one that they don't know. But remember that you have to en en enable the option that, to show annotation for participants. So, I suggest that you go over your account and go into the settings, have a look, you know, try your hand over the options with your students. You'd be amazed at, the, at how much, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, program, Zoom program has got to offer for you. Right, let me check what you have here for me on the chat box. Is it available on mobile phone? Yes, Dua, it's available on mobile phones. Um, is annotation available on mobile versions? Again, again, the same question, yes. All right, take a screenshot because somebody asked me how to use Annotation. Take a screenshot of my screen now, and then after the session, log in, log in yourself. Maybe invite one of your family members, a friend, to join with you and experiment. Try your hand with this annotation technique. Here, look at, I've just taken a print screen and put it here. I want you to take a screenshot and after the session, go in and try, as you being the host of the session, try your hand in annotation. Okay. Now that was me telling you how to use annotation. How about you? How would you use annotation in your own context? I'm sorry, Hanum, I meant eliciting and error correction. My bad. Uh, yes, Asma, it's recorded to brainstorm or illustrate diagram. Excellent, Amani. Hello, Heba. 
unmuted you. Ah, oh, look at that vocabulary game for young learners. Feedback, do I says? Get feedback from my learners. Select or underline. Wow, I love that. I love that. Ma match or choose. Yes, Iman. Yes, exactly. Answer some questions. Uh, Islam is asking me a question, but it's in private, so you can't see it, and it's a very good question. The Zoom program that you are using, is it free or paid? I tried, I already have the paid one, of course, but I tried to go into the free version through a different account. I found that all those options that I'm sharing with you today is available in your own free version. Yes, okay. Great, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, okay. Back again, I want you to put in your student's hat. Hmm. And let me show you something here. Hmm. Yeah, that's the problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you try to share your screen, you usually, I bet, you usually just choose this. Let me show you. You usually just go to the basic, you know, and share either your own folder, your own general screen, or just the PowerPoint slide that you are showing, right? But did you know that you can share a part of your screen, a portion of your screen, this is wonderful, wonderful for you to not to prepare a PowerPoint slide and just show a part of the PowerPoint. No, just open your own uh, share screen, go to the advanced option here, and then portion of screen this will allow you to control what part of the screen can the attendees see. Now, the problem about this uh, option is that right now, today, only today, they have disabled it and that they are applying or they are promoting uh, and working on this option again, but it's going to be available very soon where you'll be able to show a portion of your screen, a tiny part of your screen. But here's another thing. Sometimes, and I have seen many teachers make this big mistake, big mistake, you are sharing not only the file that you want to share with the students, like the Word or the PDF, but you are sharing your complete screen because what it's the default option. Let me show it to you here. Here. When you go into the basic, please take care of this big mistake. When you go into the basic here, automatically Zoom tells you to share screen like that. And I have made this mistake before. And why is that a mistake? Did anybody figure that out before? Let me tell you this, if you share your screen and you have like me, a WhatsApp option here, look, look what I have. So it's like an open deck. Everybody in the session can see your notifications, your personal message, your own computer. It's like they are sitting next to you here and they can see everything going behind doors, behind, inside the kitchen. And it is very dangerous because I learned this the very hard way. One time um, I was teaching an IELTS class and in the last session, one of the students told me, uh, Fatma, um, can you say hi to the mother's WhatsApp group uh, of your daughter? I was like, 
how did you know that I have a WhatsApp group of mothers of my daughters and that they are asking about the lunch books and then they're asking about who lost what and how did you know? So he told me, when you share a screen, we see everything in your screen. Imagine my surprise. I didn't know that sharing screen means sharing the computer. It's like opening your own personal bedroom to your students to get in. Dangerous, absolutely dangerous. Let me tell you, I learned that the very hard way. So what you need to do is open the file first and then click on the file that you want to open and then share. Don't do this, very, very dangerous. So Venus says, yeah, I, I tried that before. Yes, Hussein, yes. You wouldn't know, you know, I've been using, I told you, I've been teaching online for two years and I only figured it out like seven, eight months ago when it was a complete shock for me. All right. But let's, you know, let's, you know, uh, remember this in the option of the advanced. Here, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. In this part here, sharing a portion of your screen. I would have loved today to play this game with you. I had a game, which is I'm going to show you a part of the picture, and then I ask you to guess what's the picture about. I need not uh, prepare a PowerPoint slide for this. I need not prepare anything beforehand, just my wits and my ability and my control over this Zoom tool. And things would, inshallah, would go very smoothly with you. But just okay, so that you don't, you know, you don't go and try it right now, right today. Only today I feel they are disabling this option, but they will open it again. And it is again free for everybody, even the ones who have the free version. All right. Uh, another thing, I'm sorry. Uh, look at this option here, music or computer sound only. When you do that, Students cannot see anything on the screen. And I can do that right now with you. Let me try. Look at that. Look here. What do you see in your screen? What do you see in your screen now? Yep, the lecture. But can you see the PowerPoint slide? Or can you see what I am doing on my own computer right now? Now listen. <laughs> Let me try again. that I was telling you about today, which is uh, sharing a part of the screen, I would first share the screen with you, that part. And then, because you wouldn't know that it is a shared screen of uh, a train station, I would tell you, okay, now listen. And then turn off the screen and just put on, you can only see and hear what I want you to. Although I am freezing the screen for you and going on about my own business in the, you know, in the kitchen, you wouldn't know what I'm doing. Can I, you know, admit a secret with you? Something about, you know, pausing the screen and stopping the share. 
sometimes you are working from the course book, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes you just, you know, you don't want to make a PowerPoint slide and you want to open the course book and teach from the PDF, right or not? Does that happen? Okay, I am getting yeses here. So I am not, yeah, okay. You're being honest with me, I'm being honest with you. And sometimes I need to, you know, share the PDF with my students, okay? That is the student's book. But if I'm sharing the PDF, this means any PDF that I am looking at, my students can see as well. But what if I am opening my uh, teacher book. Do you want your students to see what you are doing in your teacher book during the session? Be honest with me. Do you want them to look inside your teacher book? Look, look at that. No, 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 no. Exactly. A useful tool is posing share, pause share. And when you pause share, you, they only see the PDF, the, the, the freezed part of the PDF, they cannot see anything else like I'm doing right now. I am only sharing with you that hat. But what I'm doing is I am moving between slides and you wouldn't know that I am doing that. Unless I do this right now, you again have an access to my complete screen. So don't go on preparing uh, PowerPoint slides and spending hours and hours copying and pasting stuff from the course book because you don't want the students to feel that you are just opening the PDF and that you are too lazy. Listen, you can share part of the screen, only the picture that you want them to see, only the exercise you want them to see. You don't want them to be, you know, uh, looking at all parts of the exercises from the book. You're getting that small part they see that small part. You can freeze your screen and then go look at your teacher guide. You can share a complete video here. These are the options that you can do with the shared part. You can share a video and you can optimize screen sharing for a video clip. This means what? This means the complete screen becomes like a cinema. They see it all without any parts, without any options in the middle. No, they're like having a full version of a shared video clip. And when this happens, they only see the video clip, even though you have moved on with your PowerPoint or your PDF looking at other parts. They don't see that, they only see the video. And then, again, the posing share. This is how you go about this. Please take a screenshot. Feel free to take a screenshot from this now so that after the session, you go and try your hand on these options. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Now here is to the part that I don't think most teachers utilize the most, the nonverbal feedback. Now, can I just make another poll with you here? Let me launch another poll with you and choose. What makes online classroom less engaging, engaging than physical ones? Choose the option that you feel the most. All right, no immediate feedback from students. Cannot students see students' faces? Some activities cannot be used online. Okay. No immediate feedback from students, others. Okay. Mm. For those who are writing others, could you uh, tell me what is that in the chat box? Yes, Hussein, I think though, I think you might not have a very stable connection, but can I share a pointer with you about this, Hussein? But at the end of the session, okay? Remind me, I will answer you this point at the end of the session.
technical problems, electricity, connection problems, weak network connection. Hmm. That makes the session less engaging from your point of view. Some students just cannot stand sitting behind the screen. I agree, kinesthetic one, like myself. Devices, electricity, okay. All right. Let me share with you what you guys think here. The majority seems to think that the activities, the nature of the activities, is the main problem. The fact that I cannot see my students' face so that I gauge the reaction. Hmm. Yes, many, I agree. But change takes time, don't you think? Not all participants engage in the whole session. All right, I believe that if the session is more than one, half an hour it will be boring oh well okay all right how about this let me get you back here have you ever tried using the non-verbal feedback i mean for example asking your student a question and just asking them to give you click a yes click a no Click, you know, if you want, for example, say, guys, do you want me to explain more about this? So if they click go slower, it's an indication for you to hold on and try to explain a bit more. Or maybe be, perhaps, all right, teacher, we got that. We got that. We know what you mean. We know what you mean. Let's move on. Let's move on. So go faster. They click that. Or in the options of the more, you're trying to go with the reaction. Are you more into online learning? Can I ask you to do that right now? Are you into online learning, not teaching? I want you to give me a thumb up or a thumb down. And if I go next to you, I see a many here is giving me the thumb up. Uh oh, Mr. Mustafa, thumb up. Menna Magdi, thumb up. Okay. Oh, thumb down. Okay. But then sometimes you feel that, guys, do you want a break? Not you, not you. I'm telling the students, the virtual class, you know, not you guys. Do you want a break? If they want to, they would just, you know, click that part here, that mug. Or I need to go to the bathroom teacher, but you don't want them to say that so that they don't disturb the session. They just give you this option. Or, you know, a high five. Yeah, I totally agree using that part. But what I like the most about this is that this you can see how many of your students giving you a yes and how many have given you a no go slower go faster so it's another way other than creating a poll
Look at that. Amen is giving me a high five. All right. Now, here is the last thing. Oh, sorry. Uh, before we move on, can I ask you to tell me in the chat box, or if you want, raise a hand, raise a hand, and I will open the mic for you. What other ways or what creative way can you come up with to use these uh, interaction parts here? As teachers, how can you make this, how can you make the best of this? Hint says you can know who click. Oh yeah, hi Hint. Uh, by clicking the yes option, you can't take students' attention in all. Oh yeah, that's one of the negative sides. All right, let me see who raised hands here. Asma, hello Asma. I've unmuted you. Yes, hello. Hi, so what other creative ways can you think of to use these interaction patterns? Uh, other than taking opinions would be uh, agreeing and disagreeing about answers of questions. Yes, agree. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Would you like to add more? Um, taking permission. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you so much, Asma. Let Later, me see, Amani. Uh, okay, uh, we can use uh, this uh, in uh, checking instructions. If you yes. could, if you, if you are, if you can understand this, or uh, what are we going to do? Who can tell me? Or uh, or uh, nominating someone when someone wants to uh, uh, to answer something, he can raise his hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if you want to uh, check their understand or um, their like likeliness of something, they like this something, is this thing or not? They can use the thumbs up. Excellent, excellent. Okay. I couldn't have, you know, uh, summarized it better than you. Thank you so Thank much, Amin. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, let me see that chat box here. We need some practice to apply. Absolutely, of course. Practice makes perfect. And if I were you, I would, you know, grab my sister, my brother, any one of my family, get them into the session, use their mobile phones. Everybody can do that. And even you can figure out the kind of, uh, because the, the interaction patterns varies. If you are using your mobile phone, it's a bit different than you using your uh, computer. So it depends. And it just needs some time to figure it out and to feel comfortable around that. Agreed. Okay. All right. Um, are you a hopeless drawer like me? Look at the picture here. This is me trying to draw uh, a cat all right don't laugh don't laugh i know what you're thinking but i i i just can't draw you know i i honestly can't draw i'm a hopeless drawer and i have absolutely no idea how do teachers you know even in in real life uh, i just can't draw so i have this fantastic uh, tool here for you. I know it's not from Zoom and I'm only doing things about the Zoom today, but I couldn't help myself. I wanted so much to share that with you. Can you, let's play something together, all right? Let's play together, all right? There we go. Have a look at me hopelessly trying to draw the cat. Look. Woo! <laughs> Okay, that's my way of trying to draw a cat with a mouse. And even if I had a, a pen, I wouldn't be able to draw the cat still. But look, that auto drawer program here, if you just try to make your own way around the drawer, you click here and look, a face of a cat. I don't like this one, I want another one. There you go. 
No, another one. I was trying to draw a smiley face, but it didn't work. There you go, a smiley face. A smiley face. Look. Let me try to draw a heart here, because I like to do that. Let's see. And look. Candies and stuff and hearts and flowers. Yes. <laughs> I see big yeses here. Okay, enough, enough playing, enough playing. So you just again need to go on and you know be a take the risk, take the risk, try. What is the worst that could happen? Students laughing at you? It's a laugh. So what? Let me try to draw a tree here. I'm having so much fun, I don't want to stop. The application here, it's just a website called AutoDraw. Let me share it with you. No, no, it's not from Zoom. That's why, that's why I told you. I know it's not from Zoom and I'm, I mean, I just, you know, uh, having fun. Again, the name of the program is, let me write it for you guys here on the chat box. Autodraw.com. There you go. From Google Chrome, I just typed in uh, Autodraw and that's it. Oh yeah, I tried, yeah, but I tried to see if it can color them, but no. And I think they only come in, in one color though. So I was like, you know, I wanted to draw and to see if, you know, there is a possibility for me, but, oh, well, the best we can ask of the program here. And you know what? You can download the stuff that you draw here and take that, put it into your own screen or into the, uh, let's see, the PowerPoint slide, wherever. The sky is the limit. Too much of a bother, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, I would have tried to learn drawing way easier, wallahi. Let me share the link. There you go. How about that? All right. Okie dokie. Now, do you remember at the beginning of the session when I said, I am not going to share with you what we are doing today, but you at the end of the session, going to share with me your takeaway. What did you, uh, what did you find interesting or what tool do you think you can use in your own classroom, something that you didn't know about, something that you feel, oh well, it's worth trying. Let me check instructions. At the beginning of the session, did I share my uh, screen, or I'm sorry, my agenda with you or not? No. What did I say? I said, at the end of the session, you will. Oh, I'm eliciting, I'm eliciting instructions. Shame on me. Okay. Can you type in? Hold on. Let's have some fun, all right? If you are using your computer, you will be able to right on my screen here write down here what you've learned from me in the session today or something that you are want to go and try on your own let me go to the security all right you can now write oh non-verbal feedback <laughs> 
Ok. Look what you see in the screen right now. I see that Mr. Mustafa just wrote something. Now that is Samia is writing. Samia is writing. Who wrote Bismillah? Let's see. Now I see you doing that pose. Zamzam, teach is enjoyable if you can. And somebody is writing here. Share options. So I see you. I see he was writing on my screen. And if any of the students take advantage of this, they can't because you will be able to see them. I am a control freak by nature. And as a teacher, it's part of who I am. I like to take control, but I also like my students to feel relaxed in my classroom, to feel safe, to feel that they can express themselves. And a simple tool like that, showing me who is doing what, keeps me sane as a teacher, but at the same time, gives the student the impression that they have a free reign. They can do whatever they want as long as they abide by the rules that we have. Which one? Uh, iPhone is asking about what? Uh, there will be time for in, for the question. I will just go on and ask about that right now. There you go. Suddenly everything's gone. Suddenly nobody can write anything anymore. Can I just tell you something about the security though? Let me take a print screen. At the minute, you know, you see, at the minute of doing the session, I take a print screen, I control V, and I share what I want to share with my attendees, be that teachers, be that students, it doesn't really matter. I have control. Okay. In the security part here, you see, the first option is lock meeting. So I came to the session, and this is me in my own, uh, in my own uh, classroom. I came to the session, you can't come after me. If you come after me, you know that you are late. And this cannot be usually done in a virtual class or so uh, we thought, but no, it can be. Because you know what? You can lock the meeting after you get in. So people who are late, you would know they are late. And the waiting room is a fantastic tool for you if you're going to play something like in the physical classroom. I put some of my students outside the classroom and tell them, come in. Now look, for example, for an option in the classroom that we have hidden from you. Again, I can put the students in the waiting room, kick them out of the meeting, put them in the waiting room. Of course, I tell them instructions first and then tell the instructions to the attendees and then get the students admit him back into the session and for example he does the activity that we are doing so i do not believe for a minute that an activity in a physical classroom cannot be done in an online one if the teacher is willing to do it again look at this one here renaming you can ask the student to go into groups and to rename themselves as a group. So for example, instead of coming to the session with the name Fatma, 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 or Fatma, Sara, Hind, and so on. No, you ask them to rename themselves again to work in a group with the same name, the Black Panthers, the Golden um, Fairy Tale, whatever. Again, the sky is the limit. Look here, you can make them annotate and you can withdraw that option from them. You don't want them to annotate anymore. 
look here. Again, you can also disable chat. So they will not be able to talk together on the chat box. Like look now, try to write on the chat box. If you can't write on the chat box, give me a no next to your name in the interaction pattern. Look, Shaima is telling me no. There we go. Here's another no from Aya. Another no from Hen. Very good. Now look. There you go. Control. Exactly. Okay, look. For me, I had so much fun today. Let me stop the share and they get back to you here. Questions time. Do you have any questions before we say goodbye for today? There you go, Aya. Aya, yes? Hello? <clears throat> no, I just wanted to thank you very much for this um, amazing uh, session. And uh, actually, those tools, we, we felt uh, before that they are not uh, so useful. You make them very useful, actually. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. Honestly, you have no idea how much fun I had today. Amani, hello, Amani. Yes, hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, Welcome. hello, Amani. Uh, I hear you loud and clear. To join you. Okay. Uh, I have a problem. Yes. I have a problem in sharing my screen. When I share my screen on laptop, uh, it gives me an error message. I don't know why. So from your own computer, you try to share the screen, it gives you an yes, error. But, but, but I shared before. I had many sessions with my students before, but the last one, uh, I can't, uh, I couldn't to share uh, this uh, screen. I don't know why uh, it gives me an error message that I can't share my screen. All right, are you sure that you have enabled the advanced sharing option because there are Two options here, only host and all participants. I used to share my screen, but after I, the update, I made update. To ah, Google, but that yes. happened after the update. I don't know why. Which update? Because there were two updates. The five point version, I think it's the best. And if I were you, I would try to uninstall and install again. But if it didn't work, like restart the router. If it didn't work, you can simply contact them. The customer service there is fantastic. And even okay. if you don't have- can you give uh, me the link? Uh, can yes? you give me the link of them? The link of, of the support? Absolutely, Thank absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can, you, can I just ask you to contact me in private after the session? You have, uh, if you go to my uh, uh, Facebook page, you will find my WhatsApp number, my working WhatsApp number. I don't remember it right now, but my Facebook page is called IELTS and More. Okay, I know. So I if you go to know. IELTS and More, send me a WhatsApp message, I many I will direct to it to the, the, the right you. tool and Thank the right you. person to talk to. Thanks, okay. thanks. Pleasure. As Shaima, yes, Shaima. Yes, these people know? Of course, go ahead. These people know? Do you hear me? Yes, Sashayma, I hear you loud and clear. Okay, um, first of all, thanks for this amazing session. Uh, it's so beneficial and it's so informative. Uh, uh, I, uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. I use, I'm using um, a mobile phone. Oh. I'm using Zoom on mobile phone. So uh, I, I want to know, what to what to do um, if I haven't annotation tool and um, uh, looking meeting to look meeting the options you have talked about so far. Mm. Um, All right. Um, 
the the thing is uh Shayma, no matter what the tool is it cannot be a hundred percent perfect on all devices the best way and my advice is if you're going to deliver a session try to use your computer your laptop if you have to use your mobile phone, sometimes you will have, you will meet some inconveniences. Yes. And, and you know, it just because, again, most of the teachers are using the free version. That's why most of the teachers are uh, disabled after 14 minutes. But you know what? These 14 minutes, it doesn't have to be a break through your session. These, after the 14 minutes, you can do something which we call uh, the off-screen time. Give a task for students that they can do in five or ten minutes behind screens. They don't need to see your screen. They don't need to be with you in order to be able to do that. And I suggest yes. that you have a WhatsApp group or a Google Classroom for such tasks. So the students know 40 minutes. The classes, uh, uh, you know, uh, post, for example, or uh, disabled for the minute, you directly have a task that you know you have to do because you are going to report back to the session after you get back. So it doesn't have to be you stopping the session. It's you telling the student, guys, now we have the off-screen time. What is off-screen time, Ms. Fatma? This is the time when you have a task you will do in your own and report back to me when you come to the session. Yes. Okay. Can I use uh, Can I use Zoom on desktop uh, computer? Absolutely. Yes. Of course. Do you and think you have to have a laptop? No. Yes, and I will have uh, and I will have um, uh, these options. options. Yes. Guys. Yes. Uh, can I? I'm sorry, Shayma. Uh, I see many teachers here complaining about the fact that they don't have the pro version. Type. The only two most important things about the pro version is. The 40 minute thing, which you can easily overcome with the idea of the off screen task. And the second one is uh, you don't have a stable ID. I mean, you came to the session today, although I wasn't here, and you were able to get in because I have a pro account. Let's be honest, I have a pro account in that part. So when you come to the session, I am not here, you can stay in the waiting room until I come back to you. But in the other one, you can make a recurring meeting. That's an ID you can use every time the students can use it and they will not be admitted into a waiting room or a main room unless you come to the session. I don't think it's a big deal, honestly. The only bother is if you want to have a stable ID or if you want the session to last more than the 40 minutes because you can't afford the off-screen time. How can I send homework? How can I correct it and give feedback, especially in writing homework? How can we correct? Type, okay. Let me answer the question one by one. Homework, use Google Classroom. I use that. Google Classroom is neat, it's organized, it's fantastic. And uh, through IELTS and more, inshallah, I will give a session about how to use Google Classroom. That's number one. Number two, how can I correct it and give feedback? Did you know that you can, you and your students can use something called Google Document for you, everyone in the session can write in this Google document and you can correct on the spot right in front of the students or you can just send them the feedback either through voice note or written through Google documents. Everybody can see, everybody can write and it's very good for uh, collective writing. Um, how can we overcome the 40 minutes time if we use the free version? As I just said, the off-screen time is a very good option. There's another thing is, which is uh, uh, you telling your students uh, that, uh, for example, we're doing 40 minutes on screen, 40 minutes off screen or 15 minutes off screen and then they come back to the session. And for example, uh, you can just, another thing is just put the, 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 the break after those 40 minutes. Guys, 40 minutes, five minute break, 40 minutes, five minute break. And I believe from the bottom of my heart that the best of us can have an attention span for like one hour, one hour and a half maximum. So if it's like 40 minutes, 40 minutes, I don't think it's a big deal. And the, the very contrary, for the cognitive skills, I feel that the 40 minutes is a plus, it's not a minus. Um, 
you are asking for my Facebook page, right? Okay, my Facebook page is I'll send more. I'll send more. Let me write it down for you here. IELTS and more. Simply contact me in that page and I will more than happy answer you all your questions. How about video optimization? Oh, yes. About the video optimization, if you have a very uh, low quality uh, internet, I suggest something. Uh, if you live in Egypt, and my this is something to say for everybody who is living in Egypt, go contact the, uh, because I used to have this problem, contact uh, your uh, internet server uh, provider and ask them, guys, do you, you have a fiber connection or a fiber uh, cable into my area or not. If you have fiber cable, you can raise your internet connection and you can pay like 150 pounds. With a fiber connection, I guarantee you there will be no disruption of the session. You will not see the message that says you have unstable internet connection. I know about this message. I used to have it before the fiber connection. I need to know if working through net is stable for kindergarten. Oh my goodness, kindergarten. Now, alhamdulillah, thank you, Lord. I only teach adults. But uh, again, if you have the fiber connection, the fiber cables, uh, you can uh, increase uh, the internet speed. I have like eight giga here. Amani wants to say something? Of course, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, uh, as uh, after the mission, uh, as the, uh, they ask, the, the, those people who are asking about 40 minutes and the problem of 40 minutes, okay, uh, they can uh, arrange or um, uh, divide the tasks they are going to deliver to their students according to certain time. So yes. timing, yes, timing and lesson planning, preparing the lesson before, uh, help them uh, uh, to make it easy for them to use all the first minutes uh, in an effective way. Okay. Uh, yes. Also, also uh, clear instructions. Clear instructions to help them uh, to move easily uh, among uh, and uh, transfer from uh, one activity to another. Uh, deciding, um, nominating some uh, some students, some of their students in order to uh, say or read or uh, do the activity together, okay? This helps them to save time and uh, get the whole uh, benefit from the 40 minutes. Agreed, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. That's what Thank I meant you. by the off-screen time as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amy. Do you have any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, before we say goodbye? Let me see, did I miss any of the questions here? How can I make a vote by using the interaction patterns? By the way, I will send the, uh, I will upload the, the, the PowerPoint slide today into again, I'll send more, and I will send it to Mr. Heba Abdeddaim. Thank you so much, Heba, for uh, asking me to be the guest speaker today. It was my greatest pleasure, and I never had so much fun uh, in a training session, even in when I was training face-to-face -face teachers, uh, I enjoyed myself today. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoyed myself. Uh, the recorded session. I will upload the recorded session also to uh, my YouTube channel again under the same name. I'll send more. Let me let me give you the YouTube channel for you if you want to go and uh, maybe uh, uh, let's see if you want to see the session. I will upload it to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the reel also would. Uh, upload it or not, but here is mine. Please look in the chat box. Here is my YouTube channel. And I will, inshallah, uh, upload it both to my YouTube channel and the PowerPoint as well. 
Okay. Thank you. What is possible? Uh, uh, Sammy, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Uh, Venus, what's the question, Sauber? Guys, could you please repeat the questions again? May you write the link to your channel here? Of course. There you go. Here is my YouTube channel. And here is my Facebook account as well. There you go. Both of them. There you go. It's in the chat box. Asma, what are you asking about Asma? Oh, it's in the waiting room. I am very sorry. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. I'm sorry. <laughs> I sent it to the waiting room. Oh my, oh my. And you kept asking me for it. Oh. There you go. My sincerest apologies. Uh, by the way, also the Nile Tiesel session. Uh, that was uh, about how to become an, uh, an online teacher and what places you can go to and what tools do you need to be an online teacher is also through that YouTube channel. I've already uploaded that before. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.